So the exact area under the graph was determined with limit as n approaches infinity from i equals 1 through n from delta x f of x i. So this was uh, what we studied last time. Okay, so we do have a second way, which is way more elegant, although it doesn't always work, um, in the sense that we will not be able to find what we need at all for each and every function. It's still the summation notation, but a different one, the regular s, but stretched. So this is a stretched s. We are talking about the area under the graph of f of x, of course, on the interval a comma b. So this is from a to b. And everything is the same. Simply, instead of delta x, we'll have to write dx. Other than that, it's everything is the same. Why do I replace these two? Well, I mean delta x with dx. If you remember, we talked about this situation when there is x and x plus delta x or x plus dx, they are the same. So this is delta x or dx. Delta x is the exact change in x, which is equal with the differential of x. So the approximation or the exact are the same for x. So we replace delta x by dx and the function is the same. So this is what we call the definite integral, which represents the area under the graph between a and b, under the graph of f of x. Uh, and it's always a number. Like with the summation notation, this is the lower limit for, e, for x, and this is the upper limit for x. And this is the exact same product, width times height, width times height, plus width times height, everything the same. It's just that these two now are in here, the integral from a to b from f of x dx. And the answer will always be a number. Now, when we are interested in um, evaluating um, definite integrals, uh, we have to go back, um, what we haven't discussed it yet, but we have to um, make appeal, if you want, to the fundamental theorem of calculus. It has two parts. They are not the same parts in all books. Sometimes this is called part one, and then sometimes the other one is called part one. It doesn't matter. Just remember that they are two different, it has two different functions. One, part one, in your book, in our book, shows that differentiation and integration When we integrate, we are determining this. This is an integral. We are, when we are, def when we are um, calculating this, we are integrating. So differentiation and integration are operations. And I'm missing a word here. And uh, the second um, very important uh, part is part two which will show or shows or teaches us how to evaluate a definite integral. This is what I need right now. So can anyone help with this missing word here? about differentiation and integration. They are... Opposite? Uh, inverse. Similar to uh, x squared and the square root of x. These are inverses. 
inverse operations. Uh, the same thing with natural log x and e to the x. They're inverses. Same thing here. When we differentiate an integral, we get the function. The differentiation will cancel the integration. The integration will cancel the differentiation. We'll get to that. We haven't gotten to it yet, just yet. And now what I need in order to show a few examples is how to evaluate a definite integral. Okay. So here's part two. Part two of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, FTC. Part two. This is what we are just discussing, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So here's part two. Part two says that if I have an integral from a to b from f of x dx, this can be easily calculated. And what I need, though, is the antiderivative. Anti derivative of f of x. So can anyone tell us what is the uh, antiderivative of a function denoted by f of x? As we discussed a few minutes ago, if I have f of x, then I have to use the uppercase f of x. And then we'll have to evaluate it from a to b. How do we do this? We plug in the upper limit, and we subtract when we plug in the lower limit. This is the procedure of finding definite integrals, calculating definite integrals. Okay, so I would like to look at uh, the problem that we looked at before. What was the problem? It was the uh, integral from 0 to 2 from x squared plus 2 dx, if I remember correctly from last time. Okay, so I'm going to apply this procedure, and then we'll choose uh, some more problems from the book. Uh, which function prime is x squared? Okay, so that is x cubed divided by 3, plus which function prime is 2, so that will be 2x. All I have to do is simply plug in 2, because when I plug in 0, everything goes away. But I'm going to write it so you see this. So then we have 2 to the third over 3 plus 2 times 2, but minus when I plug in 0. It makes no sense to plug in 0, but I'm going to write it just for you to see it this time. So all this is 0. So then we have 8 divided by 3 and plus 4. So this is 12, 20 divided by 3, and this is exactly what we got last time when we used the limit of the Riemann sum. But this is a much more elegant procedure and much faster. Now, the thing is that we will not be able to determine the antiderivative for any function we want. And we will look at an example in which we can find the antiderivative. So... Um, so let's look at a few examples from your book. So here's my book. See how we evaluate certain... Um, okay, so um, uh, let's start with 31 on page... 395. And we have 0, the integral from um, 0 to pi over 4 from secant squared t dt. There is no integral without dt or dx. There is an integral, if you want, the integral from 0 to 10 from dx, which means the function is 1. But there is no integral without dx or dt or dv or whatever. So this is a definite integral. I will apply um, fundamental theorem of calculus part two, and I will try to find the antiderivative, and then evaluate it from zero to pi over four. Which function prime is secant squared? Very good. So this is tangent t. Oh, I just saw that. Uh, um, I need to do a Newton's method. Sorry, I just didn't see it. I just saw that right now. 
So I plug in um, pi over 4, so I get tangent pi over 4 minus when I plug in 0. I know that this is 0, I know that this is 1, so the answer is 1. So let me just show a few more examples with, um, of different, different uh, integrals, and then I'll uh, go back and show a Newton's method. Okay. I'm looking for problems that I did not do last night, so um, you have as many um, applications as possible. Yes, 40 on page 395. So 40 is the integral from 1 to 2 from 4 plus u squared divided by u cubed, of course, du. Okay, so um, we don't know how to um, integrate um, a fraction. You will. You will know how, in um, depending on the fraction, but in general, you're going to have to wait till calc 2. So I don't have an antiderivative, a function whose derivative is this. But I can work on this algebraically and write the following. 4 over u to the third plus u squared over u to the third du. Why? Because this is a sum and this is one term. I could have not been allowed to separate it unless if this were um, two terms or three, but it's only one, so I can separate into two fractions. I will continue simplifying the, the, both of them. So the integral from one to two from four times u to negative three here I simplify and I write 1 over u du. And now I'm ready to um, find the antiderivative of each. So I copy 4, which function prime is u to negative 3? That is u to negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1 plus which function prime is 1 over u? Can anyone uh, say anything? Which function prime is 1 over u? We know that. It's not ln, is it? Very good, indeed. Okay. That is natural log. Excellent. However, remember we talked about this. It has to have the absolute value. Perfect. Okay, I'll simplify before I plug in the numbers to get the final answer. Perfect. So this will be negative 2, and I'll simplify. So I get negative 2 over u to negative 2. When I move it to the denominator, it becomes u to the second power. Plus natural log, the absolute value of u, from 1 to 2. Is this part clear? So we have there 4. The denominator was negative 2, and this is u to negative 2. When I simplify, I get negative 2, and this goes to the denominator. So that's how I get this. Is this okay? Yep. Okay, so we continue now. Negative 2, you know me, I want the constants to wait. I plug in 2, and I get 1 over 4, minus when I plug in 1, and I get 1. And then plus, I plug in 2. Um, I, it's fine to do it like that, so I also I don't want to confuse you. You can plug in 2 in both, and then at the end plug in 1. I would rather stick with one, one method. So it's the same thing, but I, I don't want to um, confuse you. So I plug in 2 in both. So negative 2 over 4 plus natural log 2, which does not need the absolute value. Now minus when I plug in 1. So I have negative 2, but when I plug in natural log, 1 in natural log, I get 0. So this, this is negative 1 half plus natural log 2, and this is minus 2 with minus in front is plus 2. Yes, I have to combine these two. So 2 minus 1 half, so it's 3 halves, plus natural log 2. And this is final. 
And we could have not done this with the formulas we have with the limit of the Riemann sum. Any questions? Do we get the idea of how to uh, evaluate um, definite integrals? So. Yes? Okay, so let's uh, look at one more problem and then I'll stop for a Newton's method. Okay. Uh, let's look at 21 on the same page. I think I'm on 5. So 21 on page uh, also 395. It's the integral from 1 to 4. Yes, it is 1 to 4. From the function 5 minus 2t plus 3t squared dt. Okay, not as difficult a situation. We try to find the antiderivative, which function prime is 5, so the answer is 5t minus 2, which function prime is t, so that's t squared over 2 plus 3, which function prime is t squared, and that's t to the third over 3. Clean it up first and get 5t minus t squared plus t cubed from 1 to 4, and now plug in 4, 4 times 5, 20, minus 16, plus 64, minus, do not forget, put this in parentheses because all terms will be turned into opposite, so we have with 1, we have 5, minus 1, plus 1, so uh, 20 minus 16 is 4, plus 64 is 68, and this is minus 5, which is 63. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, um, any Newton's method. If you'd like to give me a Newton's method, let's stop and look at one Newton's method before we continue with properties of the definite integral. Anyone. It can be any problem you, lo you like, or if you want to choose the problem from that test, or anything. Okay, the problem on that test is to cosine x equals negative x minus 1. So our first step is to... Um, move everything to one side because we are creating a function. So that's first step in which we write f of x equals 2 cosine x plus x plus 1. In step number 2 we have to write that f of x is continuous everywhere as a sum of continuous functions. In step number three, we have to find an interval, and then from these two, we have to say by i, v, t, and we'll continue in a moment, the intermediate value theorem. So let's put the function in the calculator. So in y equals uh, 2 cosine x, make sure that you have mode, the mode in uh, radian mode, plus x and plus 1. And I go to second and table, and I already see um, the int, maybe not. So let's look at negative 2 and negative 1. Yes, I found an interval between negative 2 and negative 1. And um, I'll say f of negative 2 is negative, and f of negative 1 is positive. Therefore, by IVT, there exists a, a number C in the open interval negative 2, negative 1, such that F of C is 0. So the intermediate value theorem does not determine, we talked about that a long time ago, 
uh, in, under continuity. Um, the intermediate value theorem does not uh, determine uh, the solution for us. It only says because the function is continuous and it changes sign on this interval, and being continuous, it must cross the x-axis. So there must be a point where f of c is 0. So in step number uh, 4, we are going to find f prime for this function, which is negative 2 sine x plus 1. In step 5, we're going to write Newton x minus the function to cosine x plus x plus 1. And everything divided by the derivative, negative 2 sine x plus 1. And in the next step, I have to choose a starting value. Which one would it be? It doesn't matter, negative 2 or negative 1. However, I have to make sure that this derivative is not 0 for the starting point. So if I plug in negative 2 radians, this will not be 0 for sure. If I plug in negative 1 radian, this will not be uh, 0 for sure. This will be 0 only when sine x equals 1 half, only for x being pi over 6. And this is not pi over 6, and this is not pi over 6. So it doesn't matter. So let's say I decide to start with negative 2. I put Newton's method in the calculator. Do not delete anything, because what you have is useful. So you just have to insert x and minus, and parentheses for the top and parentheses for the denominator. If you forget parentheses, you're not going to get what you want when you put it in the graphing calculator, so be careful with that. Okay, so now I go to second and insert, and I insert x, I insert minus, and I insert a parenthesis. Then I go all the way, close the parenthesis, and divide another set of parentheses by negative 2 sine x, and then plus 1, and close the parenthesis. At this point, I'm done with that, so second and quit. So we go to variables, this key, variables. And we're going to choose the y variable. So we'll go to the right, and we're choosing the function f of x. And we are going to choose y1, because that's where I have Newton's method. And I'm going to plug in negative 2, because that's what I, started, I decided to start with, negative 2. And I press enter. And this is our first iteration. Now we haven't decided, let's say, eight decimal digits. Because I saw that that's what uh, WebAssign is asking you to do. So I found x1 to be negative 1.3499265533. I copy all of them, and then I'll make a decision. Now the next step is to simply go to second and entry, right here, second and entry. It copies what you see, but I want the calculator to insert this number. So overwrite negative 2 with the previous answer. Previous answer being this key, previous answer. And make sure you don't have answer 2. So make sure you delete that 2. So now what is the calculator doing is inserts in um, Newton's method the previous value to get x sub 2, the second iteration. Negative 1.37982073. Now I don't have to do anything, just repeat. Second and entry. It copies it. Uh, and I copy myself x sub 3, a third iteration. Negative 1.379 seven five seven six one eight and again second and entry and this should be the last one I I shouldn't even copy this one because it's identical so if they want eight decimal digits two four two four six eight so you may have to round up to six two is this um, okay for Newton's method?